Do y'all get a notice? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm super, super excited to have this conversation, everybody. First of all, greetings, hello from East Palo Alto. Brother Kelly, what's up? Uh, greetings from the Bay Area outside of San Francisco. My name is Latanya or LT, and um, I'm uh, I'm actually a, um, a partner with a third party provider called Career Launch. We're a social enterprise. We are not hosting this conversation. This is actually uh, just coming from me as, as a as an individual who's looking to to connect with and build community with particularly first-gen professionals, but obviously this conversation is beneficial to everyone. So um, one of the reasons why I'm excited to have this conversation is because I hear quite, a, quite often from people who say they're really nervous about being on LinkedIn, not sure where to begin, not sure how to connect with folks, can feel overwhelmed and just sort of shut down altogether. We want to hear from you all too about like, where are you on the spectrum of, of uh, building community with Career Launch? Want to clarify, now um, the goal of this conversation really is about building community, especially as someone who identifies as a first gen professional and a person of color. Um, it is not explicitly about how to find jobs on LinkedIn. That is a very important conversation, not the goal of this particular conversation, but clearly building community also can lead to jobs. So perhaps that'll come up as well. Okay, um, I do want to say one more thing before I introduce um, my esteemed colleagues and guests, Cynthia and Tarian, um, how this also has come up for me personally. So I'm one of the contributing writers to a recent edited um, book about first gen professionals edited by my good, good friend, Mary Blanchard Wallace. One of the, and, and it ha just so happens, the chapter that um, I co-authored with my friend, Dr. Danette Bowie is about resilience. And one of the things that we talk about, and I'll share it with you in a second, is what are some things that can keep you going as a first gen professional? right, where they're actually, in many cases, depending on your industry, fewer of us in those spaces than, um, than, our, than our educational platform. So let me show, share with you two slides regarding this. And so in each chapter in this book, there are some um, tips at the end, some, some specific strategies to get people thinking and moving and get some action. Like I said, my chapter, our, our, our chapter was on resilience. And one of the things we say at the end is um, take advantage of online communities such as LinkedIn and Facebook groups, particularly those that are relevant to your work, knowing that these spaces can provide opportunities for you to stay current in your field and to expand your network. And when those happen, that can often lead to greater work satisfaction, and if not necessarily work satisfaction, a renewed sense of purpose. So, um, so this was this was something that we put in the ch uh, chapter in this book. The other thing we recommended for folks is, ironically, letting re reminding everyone that LinkedIn is a great place to share your accomplishments with peers, such as promotions while also elevating your professional brand. And sometimes language like professional brand can feel off-putting and we can talk about that too. But I wanted to stress that um, one of the things we wrote is that LinkedIn can be really useful when you are not currently receiving validation in your workplace. And we are happy to talk about that as well. All right, but without further ado, I would like to turn this over to my guests and colleagues, and we're going to start with Cynthia Cortez. So Cynthia, if you could introduce yourself and talk about your identity as a first-gen professional. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our event, our collective event. It means a lot to be here. I'm a little nervous, but as soon as I start talking, I will be able to um, move that energy in the right direction. A little bit about myself. Um, I'd like to start my story with I'm a product of college access and success programs. And that's where I get my first introduction to the identity of first generation. Before it was student, now it's professional. So I was born and raised in LA. My parents are from Honduras. 
and they instilled a strong sense of you have to take advantage of the opportunities that come across your path. And that drive allowed me to find these college access programs to immerse myself in understanding what does it mean to navigate and get to college? What is a SAT? What does it mean to take A through G? Why do I have to write these um, personal statements now, insight questions? And so navigating that process, I needed the staff uh, that worked with me. In my case, it was a program called Pre-Collegiate Academy that was led through UC Berkeley. So that's where the first understanding comes from. It's what do I need to do to move through the process and navigate? The second layer there was that these programs were set up to target communities like mine. They're Latino, Black, African American, Southeast Asian, Asian communities, Native communities. Because there's an awareness that opportunity wasn't necessarily baked in for these communities by virtue of many reasons that we're, we can talk about in the conversation too. So that was my first understanding, first generation access, first generation additional support. And a lot of it was um, behavioral navigational. Now, fast forward, moving through college, I decided to build my career in two areas. One, within higher ed. I was a college access uh, program, I was a retention program participant, and then my first job out of college was a college advisor through Destination College Advising Corps. So it just kind of permeated this drive to say, we need more people, I need to provide the knowledge that I've learned along the way to more people. And so I've, I've worked in multiple higher ed institutions, uh, small private schools, UCs, public schools. And so what I learned there was about programmatics and initiatives. How do you develop the experience for students based off of their identities, intersectional identities, different experiences, different ways of understanding, well, why is the system set up this way? So I learned that in my half of that career in higher ed. The other half I've dabbled in quite intensively has been the nonprofit sector. Nonprofit connected to government, nonprofit connected to public policy or different mission areas of focus to understand the relationship between operations, money, resources with the programmatics. And so my career has taken me from higher ed to nonprofit, higher ed to nonprofit, where I realize now that first generation is taking a whole different understanding as a professional. So as a student is how do I get from A to B? As a professional, I have come up around a very real uh, awareness by virtue of some hard lessons learned in my career. Um, but by virtue of having a collective space that I started off with a, a couple of colleagues that we are in conversations to develop this first gen collective, this space, how do we create that? We realize in that conversation and, and contributing there that wealth and understanding institutions, the way they're set up to protect or hoard wealth is now very much entwined with my first step professional identity. So what does that mean when I'm looking at maybe that's the next stepping stone for my career, career journey? And you're wondering why is this workplace culture set up this way where it feels hostile? Why am I confronting microaggressions? What is it about my existence that is causing this tension around I want the opportunity, the career opportunity, the job, the salary, the title, and as a first-gen professional, navigation skills that I picked up as a student is not yielding. What, what's happening? There's this dissonance. And so that's been an extremely painful yet liberating process um, that influences how I understand blending my identity. So I'm a single mom, I'm Latina, I'm first generation, my family's from Honduras. All of these identities that come into this sense of, well, what's my purpose? And how do I imagine another world by virtue of the skill sets I have? So that's uh, some of my story. On the back end, if I think about the two lenses, has been my undergraduate degree, which is Peace and Conflict Studies, which I got to look at the global scale. What do institutions do to promote or mitigate conflict, particularly identity-based conflict? And then I decided to push and change systems and do systemic change collective impact work. I picked up a degree in social research methodology. So both of those become knowledge creation. We can create a different thing. And the world is not centered on a, any singular group's narrative, namely white male Christian middle class. So I find myself in a space today realizing that a lot of the tensions of what do I do? How do I do it? Where do I want to connect? I need people that can honor and validate the challenges of being first gen. And then I started to find that in LinkedIn. So I'll stop right there. <laughs> <my back. laughs> nice, 
nice little nice little teaser and segue. Thank you, Cynthia. And I I just appreciate you so much. And I'll say more about how I got to know Terry and Cynthia in a second. But I think you can hear so much about her just in that introduction. All right. Thank you, Mama. All right. We're going to send now we're going to invite Terry into this conversation. Terry, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your first gen identity? Yes. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, before I get to that, I, I, with this space, I have two things. One, I want to give an acknowledgement to all uh, women and women of color, uh, especially our uh, women identify and trans women. You know, a lot of political things are happening right now. So first, I want to use this space to acknowledge, um, acknowledge all the hard work uh, and just so much going on right now. Um, two, I, I love, I want to start this conversation with some affirmations. And so uh, I have two to be exact. One is you are, you are enough. Again, you are enough. The second one is uh, your worth is not valued by what you do for others. Again, your worth is not valued by what you do for others. So just wanted to start that off like that. Um, just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Terry, and as you can hear from my accent, I'm from the South, originally from Mississippi, but I am currently in upstate New York, uh, near Rochester, New York. Uh, so I'm very close to Lake Ontario, have been here two years. Um, dealing with the snow is a lot. This is a different type of snow. <laughs> uh, um, so as it relates to my first gen identity, coming from the South, uh, especially Mississippi ingrained in a lot of different history, uh, quite controversial as well. Um, being from a community where my county is one of the most impoverished counties in Mississippi, and I think either top 20 or top 50 in the United States. Uh, so I had a lot of barriers. Um, but especially raised by a single mom, but and being the oldest. Uh, so I had some challenges there, but uh, made it through high school, went to college. I did not realize my first gen identity until I was in my master's program. So I got my bachelor's degree in accounting. Nowhere in accounting did we ever talk about identity related things. It was basically a process. Um, and so I was on track to be, hey, I'm going to be an accountant. I want to, at, at that time, I didn't, I wanted to be a doctor, but I said, uh, I didn't, I didn't like science like that. So um, I said, well, I want to build a hospital. And so hospital is based on finances. And so I said, okay, I can do that if I do accounting, connect with some doctors and then kind of make this happen. So again, I did not know much about college. And so that was my trajectory, I said, okay, this will happen. Well, life happens. Um, and so figured out accounting was not for me. Uh, did two internships and then found out about higher education through my different involvements in my, uh, in my fraternity, orientation leader, uh, doing a lot of different things on campus and even connected with my vice president of student affairs at that time. So from there, I kind of realized more about my first gen identity. Uh, and I'm more of a new, I'm a considered a newer professional. I've been in the field less than five years. So as I shape my professional identity, I see it through two lenses. One lens is typically what we usually hear about the imposter syndrome, the figuring out what your path is, like even throughout college, but even afterwards, figuring out what is my next step, why, um, how, what decisions am I making the right decisions? Not really having others to, or at least family that, that can really guide me, uh, or at least in my mind, uh, figuring, having that assumption. Um, and not really at that time using the resources of my friends and family and other uh, fraternity brothers, other individuals on campus, um, using that resource, but not using them to the utmost, um, not using them as much as I should have in an appropriate way. Um, the other piece, um, the, so that's the one part that we usually hear about. The next part as I have journeyed through learning about first generation, um, being in my previous roles, uh, leading programmatic aspects for first generation students and helping the campus, educating the campus about supporting first generation students, especially marginalized populations. 
So I started looking at this through a very different lens. So through the model, uh, don't know if I'm saying the researcher's name correctly, but USO's Community Cultural Wealth Model. And so that model really looks at six different uh, six different uh, aspects of capital. So you're not looking at it through the pessimistic way. You're looking at it through how, how have you built, uh, what are things that you've learned before? What, what are the things that are related to your identity that can be used as a benefit to navigating certain spaces? So it's six capitals. So it is aspiration, navigational, social, linguistic, familial, and resistant. And so as I think about my own identity professionally and then helping others as well, it is how can I bring the best out of you? What are your strengths? How can I help and support that? And so that's how I see my lane now. It is not, if, if I'm a first gen, like I didn't have all these access. Yes, I acknowledge that, but also how can I use the strengths that I have, use the abilities and talents that I have to flourish um, and also, how do I identify that in others and uplift it? So I'll end there. Thank you, thank you. You're just getting started. Um, okay, so fun fact, everyone. Uh, uh, Terry and Cynthia and I are great examples of how community can be built on LinkedIn. So I have yet to be in the same physical space as Cynthia, for example, um, but we, the, we connected separately, Cynthia and I and Terry and I, on LinkedIn, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and then um, all came together as a collective. But um, Cynthia, let me go back to you. Why LinkedIn? Of all social media spaces that are out there, why why are you out there on LinkedIn? It took a lot of courage. Okay. Uh, I first, I felt most comfortable on Facebook, not very active on any particular platform. I've had friends that really tried to nudge me on Twitter. I didn't find that there. And then Instagram was more so like, here's a picture of me. And then I do something like that, not really professional oriented. Um, but then I realized something was off in terms of my professional joy at the last job I had. And for me, I've been very, very, a very strong advocate for if we're going to pursue outcomes for our communities, we have to approach it in such a way that the people are at the center of that experience, whether it's a program, an event, uh, initiative, that is the core of it, which is the reason why I picked up the social research methodology degree. So I was working at a higher institution and I realized quickly that I couldn't talk about equity, diversity, and inclusion in a way that would hold that voice at the center of design. And so I would enter, and, uh, Transparency, I was serving as a deputy chief diversity officer. So I, the approach there was we need to take the feedback of our community, faculty, staff, and students. What exactly are their pain points? Again, in the spirit of opportunity. These are the pain points in their in the career trajectory. And I'm trying to find people like-minded who are speaking similar language and who are uplifting me, filling my cup by virtue of the work. And I could not find that. I could not find that in my team. I cannot find that in my unit. I cannot find that in my immediate nine to five, eight to 10. I could not find that there. And I became extremely frustrated because I, I had I questioned myself, why did I take on this role? It doesn't seem like I'm doing or able or even asked to do the work that I thought was pitched to me. I was pissed, I was upset, I was annoyed, I was frustrated. And so it, it started with, you, you're feeling stuck, you're not stuck. I, I had to have that, right? You're, I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling uninspired. No, you're not stuck or uninspired. So where are you gonna get, like the, the conversation, the leadership, the oh, you're doing something that inspires you so much if I can't get that in my day to day at work. And so I turned to LinkedIn and I'm very treading carefully like, oh my gosh, like I really wanna talk about diversity, equity, inclusion this way. And I really want to call out nonsense this way, but I'm not brave enough to do it that way, but who is? And so it started off like going into LinkedIn and adding people. If they posted someone or a friend posted something, I was like, I'm gonna just add them or connect with them. And then LinkedIn will tell you, are you sure? Do you, do you know this person? I'm like, I don't know this person. I'm still gonna connect because I needed exposure 
to things that were uplifting, to, to the real imagination of what structural change, what does it mean to counter white supremacy, the work, I wanted access to the work, I was saturated in the hurt, right, of the movement, I was saturated in the frustration, I can't, I can't be around this too long, it started off that way, wow, you're posting something I like, or wow, you're doing something I did. Every now and then, it would probably put a heart emoji or that little like celebration and the curiosity. And then when I realized people were responding like to, stu to stuff like that, then I started cross pr promoting. I'm gonna share what you shared, right? Keeping space, because it would be too much if I put my idea in there. And I saw people liking it one or two. I'm like, oh, something's happening here. And so that ball gave me the momentum of, if you're feeling stuck, I needed to find an exit at that point. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And so, well, you need, I need, I know I need to build my network. That was the original, I need LinkedIn to build a network, but then it became organic conversations in the comment box or in someone's DM. And it started off that way. And so by logging into LinkedIn in the morning or in the evenings, I felt there are a group of people working at multiple institutions or organizations doing work that uplifts me. And I need that to, to heal because I was like, I'm so upset, but I okay. need that. So that's where it helped me. Yeah. You, you, you said a lot. Let me, let me, let me, let me break it down a little bit. Um, <laughs> Cause you shared so much strategy as well. And I think that's important. I think people um, need to not be shy about having a strategy. Strategy does not mean that, um, that it's evil or anything like that. You just have to be intentional, right? I love your intentionality. Okay. The other thing you mentioned too, Cynthia, was, and I think a lot of people are in this place of like not feeling supported in, in their current in their current role. And you said, I was trying to write it all down. Um, you, were, you were looking for community. That's how you and I connected. I think, I think it was about the first gen professionals book and you commented. And then I kept seeing you comment on things. I was like, okay, sister. All right. I like, you know, this is, this is what she's talking about. The sort of putting that energy out there and eventually you'll get, you'll see, and this is true of any social media platform, you kind of get out of it what you put in. So if you start sharing something, then people who like that thing will like it back. And then the cool thing about LinkedIn, it is, it is inherently a, a networking platform. So you do want to connect with those people. I think people get hesitant. We're like, oh, am I stalking? Or like I'm in their DMs on Instagram. There's a whole social media platform. I mean, there's a whole connecting platform. Okay, one more question for you, Cynthia. And then, um, Tarian, I want to hear from you. I'm just going to give you the question already. Um, when you go on LinkedIn, what is your thought process? What, what are you intentionally doing? But Cynthia, first, I want to ask, um, you talked about connecting with people you don't know. How do you know who to connect with? How, well, tell us about that. I... I Pay attention to a couple different factors. If they're like content creators, if they're posting something they're reflecting on, they wrote it, they're thinking about it. If the value systems are there that align with me, like we want to create a whole different, more equitable, loving world. And I see a couple of them, I want to connect. And before I saw, I would see, well, I want to connect immediately. And I'm like, okay, it's okay. We'll get one post, get another post going. I think I also like to connect who with people who that is their craft. They're constantly, um, they're uh, researchers, they're organizational leaders, and they're using this platform to send and deliver their message. And if that message resonates, I add them because I want more exposure to their message, whatever that may look like. Um, I think when it's something that is in the in the topic of interest, so let's say it's like uh, college access work, right? I'm not in college access work, but I love and value it. I'll probably, I want to see how the movement's happening because I'm not in there anymore. But I need to be in it because it's all interconnected. So in, in brief, I try to see what are the issue areas I'm most passionate about. Uh, right now at this point in my life, it's also how are you approaching this change which you seek? Does it feel authentic? Does it feel collective? Are you about the people, for the people, with the people? Or does it feel more transactional? And if it's transactional, I tend to swerve. I'm like, mm, I'll, I'll see it show up in my feed, but I'm not necessarily pursuing a connection. I love it. And I hope every, and Cynthia, when you get a chance, take a look at the comments too. 
but I hope people are seeing you have to be a bit of an anthropologist when it comes to LinkedIn and understanding the ecosystem. It also means, and this is where it can get a bit uncomfortable, understanding yourself and what is it that you need at this time, knowing that your needs may change. And so it's not, like I said, we're not focusing on finding a job. That is one way to approach LinkedIn, but I need, it's so important that you hear what Cynthia's strategy was about, uh, Cynthia, I just love how you talk about like creating worlds that don't exist, right? Like in, in finding people who are in that same space with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Tarian, all right, when you go to LinkedIn, what are you trying to do? Yeah, so great question. Uh, so for me, when I first started with LinkedIn, I think it uh, it was peer, it was kind of peer pressure, honestly, like everybody else was doing LinkedIn. So it was like, you're not part of this group if you're not doing LinkedIn. And so for me, uh, I was like, okay, I'll do this, but had little to no direction. Um, so uh, for, I started it, then I said, I really haven't found the value of this um, in this. I know some of us feel that way. Some of us are like having that strategy. I had no strategy at all. I just was on it in the beginning. Um, but right now, what I really use LinkedIn for is, the, is an opportunity to expand my knowledge. And so uh, I am someone that I don't know everything, but there are some people that know a lot of different information. It's like how there are different ways of creating things. So I'm like, okay, there's someone that is smarter that's using a different strategy. Uh, so I am very passionate about uh, new professionals, uh, creating space and belongingness for new professionals, and also uh, Black Males Initiative, exploring emotional identities and things of that nature and improving black male initiatives and helping and assisting black black men. So that's usually my approach when I go on there. I see a lot of individuals that are posting a, posting about this or something related to D, DEI work. So I always, if I look at something, I say, okay, how can I apply this to my work? Uh, how can I apply this to my own personal life? What are they posting? What are some reasoning? And even sometimes looking at the comments because um, what someone shares, like if they're, they share a question and people answer, or even if people are posting just a statement and other people are bringing their thoughts and opinion, um, I, val I value that and like, okay, what, think about that person's approach and thinking about it in a different way. So LinkedIn to me is like a, more of a knowledge hub and how can I think and do better uh, with what other people have shared. Okay, let's stay with you. Look, one of the tips I put in the chat for everyone is to have someone, a good, good friend, that good friend who will also tell you when something ain't right. Um, a good friend or colleague, review your LinkedIn page and, and, and your post and give you feedback or like, okay, this is what I see. These are some common themes that emerge. So this is what I see with Tarian. I've told Tarian this, this is not new, but Tarian, Tarian is who he is. We all sort of, you know, bring ourselves to, our, to all of our spaces. So that's going to include LinkedIn. Tarian opened today by acknowledging black women and, um, and uh, trans women um, and affirming. That is who, if you go to Tarian's LinkedIn page and I, I encourage you, to link with all of us, you will see that on, on Tarian's LinkedIn. That's just who Tarian is. That's how I got to know Tarian. Tar I remember you shared a post about, I think it was just women that influence, what was it? Tell, tell the people what your post was. Yes, so um, the post was about just the impact of the women. I think it was during Women's History Month or something like that. Uh, so I saw this post, I think it was by the Winter Group, and they do, um, they do DEI work. Um, so they talk about Women's History Month. I love their posts. They are very informational. Uh, so I was like, okay, how can I share this? So I thought about people, and I remember maybe a month or two before is when I attended a uh, attended NASPA conference, and LT was doing a presentation. So I said, okay, that was so insightful hearing about the first gen, uh, different show, uh, shows and movies and, and articles and things that 
talk about first gen. I said, I never thought about that. So I was like, this is someone that is providing knowledge. So I had already added LT. So I said, okay, let me, I acknowledge one person. I said, let me also acknowledge LT because I saw the post that she was doing, information that she was sharing and, and just an advocate, a huge advocate for first gen professionals, especially first gens of color. And so I just said, okay, I'll just do this. And just thank you for just the influence that you've had on me. And it, we just went from there. <laughs> Well, you make it sound like magic, but <laughs> <laughs> if, if we could like elaborate on it a little bit more. So mm -hmm. I, again, family and friends, we want you to hear the thoughtfulness behind it. Again, it isn't like Terry is like sliding into my DMs or whatnot. We can't, we can't even have that thought process when it comes to LinkedIn, not at all. Um, but being his authentic self put something out there. I know I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I didn't you know, realize I was having that impact. I literally had it in my mind. I was like, I'm going to connect with this person. But then we ended up seeing each other in Baltimore anyway. So then, <laughs> so then that happened. And now here we are today. So you see these opportunities can really open up for you. Cynthia and Terry, if we could talk a little bit more about content creation. Cynthia, you had brought this up before because you're like, I'm going to stick my little, my little baby toe in this first, right? <laughs> and so... Talk, talk to us a little bit more about the difference between sort of liking, sharing content, because that, that sharing content is still content creation because you don't, you typically don't just share, you add a little commentary as well versus starting, you know, um, a different way of doing it. But tell us, tell us your content creation strategy. Yeah. When I started, I, it started with, I, I need people like who's talking about what so the most courageous behavior I did was probably like or some kind of like emoji on something I saw when I started getting a little bit more comfortable I realized like what is it within these people that allows them so easily to post something and share their voice and maybe quoting a passage of whatever article they're sharing or what is it that they want to celebrate by taking a picture at an event and then adding a blurb of what they're so proud about, what they want to recognize. And it, I realize that this they're they're not overthinking who they are or over worried about how someone else is going to receive it, and more so about the act of visibility. And I'm like, I can do that. I can be visible, my name around a certain issue or passion area. So then it became. I want visibility on this because I don't feel seen at work. I don't feel connected or or my voice has been stifled because like, who am I if I'm not able to express my true approach and feelings around the work? And so that's how I started. And I saw the reaction of the people I was connected with. Some of them would put comments and say, oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing or I appreciate this. And, or, or if they were like friends, they're like, oh my, thank you so much, Cynthia. Like, yes, this is a reflection of you. It would vary if, if I knew them and if I didn't know them. Then once I got comfortable cross-promoting, taking an article or someone else's post and adding a little blurb, now I find myself saying, okay, well, I get people saying, wow, you're you're pretty smart. You're, you have some ideas. And so at this phase, now I'm like, okay, now I want to be one of those type of people that I'm always liking or resharing or commenting because they're mm -hmm. seeing the story or truth in such a way that I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. I want to be now there. I want to model that. And mm. what does that practice look like? Sure, I anticipate I might become uncomfortable. Maybe something ugly makes it into a message. But I, I want to, I'm now more bold and, and have the capacity to terrain there, create it and do it. And I've been doing it ad hoc wise. But now I feel even more emboldened to do it because I'm so committed to we need to rethink all of this because the way I landed in November, December, January for that window, uh-uh. Like people cannot be doing this and there's a lot of people that have my journey. And so I need, I felt spirit came and said, you need to rise up and start doing this. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that, that's how it, it worked out in my head. Love it. Tarion, is there anything you want to add about content creation or 
have you ever just started a post on all on your own or are you ever share what kind of what kind of a linkedin content creator are you yes uh at first i started exactly how cynthia talked about um now how i view it is i'm more of a sharer of information uh like i'm seeing this knowing the uh, i don't know much about the algorithm of of linkedin but i can say that usually what happens is you're not going to see everything that people post uh especially some people have more follower more um, followers some people have less followers so uh i'm like how can i share the wealth that i have so uh usually i will share it uh, at first i would just share it and not say anything but it is how can I put some extra content uh, to this? But now I'm focusing on how to be more strategic. If you notice on LinkedIn, LinkedIn will only have, there's only so many words that are so many characters that you can see, and then you have to click more. Well, our attention, knowing about human attention spans, our attention spans are decreasing um, because of the access of, of technology, I think it's a few seconds or um, that our attention span has. So how can I get people to click on this and be interested in it? Uh, so it is creating a short but engaging message to get people to think, okay, how can I get them to click on more? Uh, what would I be interested in? So now it's kind of the intentionality. And even through my own post, usually now I, I post things that I've done. Uh, I'm looking into thinking about my own passion areas too. How can I showcase that? Not just things that I've done, but I've seen a lot of people put their own interests out there too. Um, not just work-related, but their other volunteer experiences, the impact they've had on others. So I want to create that, um, but before I can create that, I'm learning from others and being very strategic about how do I share that message out. It's not easy. It, it's, it's it requires thought. It really it does. does. <laughs> I'll, I'll share my strategy. And then a question for each of you coming after that is what don't you share on LinkedIn? I think that's important. Um, so for, for um, the community here, just so you know, I am very conscious. I post on LinkedIn at least once a week, at least sometimes it's more than once, but at least once a week, because I want to keep things fresh. Um, I often share, um, um, if I'm presenting somewhere, I share opportunities. Um, I think if you go on my, I was saying this to you all, like, oh, have someone look it over. If you go on my LinkedIn, you know that I support first-gen students. Like, it's so clear, it's evident that if nothing else, a little bit of the flash, but that's more on my Instagram probably. But that's my main thing that I want people to know about me. And I think that's a good question to ask yourself. What do you want people to know about you? Um, but like Tarion was just saying, what are what are your what are you passionate about? Because again, when you put it out there, you're gonna it's gonna come back to you. You're gonna find people like like Cynthia who like your stuff, who comment on it, and those are the people you want to connect with. That this is what we mean about building community is finding those like minded people. All right, it's good stuff. So Terry, let's go back to you what you started to get at this what don't you share on linkedin is there anything you put it all out there <laughs> no i i do not um going back to the the aspect of feeling a little uh feeling peer pressure i still think my thought is boxed in like okay just use it for work and work accomplishments or work duties uh, so there's something that i am working through uh, so I share that honestly, because I think some of us are still boxed into to that or um, yes, it is a platform for that. Uh, so I do not first post any personal things. I, I try going back to being a very strategic. That's what I use space. I'm like, uh, how could I use a different app for different things? So um, I have Facebook and Instagram. So uh, more of my pictures and things I do on a daily life is more on my Instagram. Uh, my Facebook is more in the middle of work and personal. So I don't post any personal things. And I also um, am being very critical about uh, political beliefs. Uh, so that's a growing thing that I'm starting to notice too on there. Um, and the reason why I don't post about that is because of that gray line. Now there are some things that I'm like, yes, this is, 
these are the rights um rights of individuals these are and everybody's open to their own opinion um but i don't believe i see a lot of bickering on instagram and facebook so i'm not uh i don't think a a linkedin for me is a space of the contentions and conflict as we talked about the affirmations and giving knowledge i am very strategic on just having that um the political sphere is, is very much like not a space for me. So those are the two aspects that I don't uh, use it for, the personal and the political. Everything else I, I usually just post about, uh, but those are the two very critical parts there. How about you, Cynthia? What don't you post on LinkedIn? Similar, I think um, learning how to be graceful and tactful around venting. Right? Because you want to speak truth to an observation or a reality, maybe in your workplace or a social phenomenon. But how do you speak to that issue in a way that pulls people in? So anything um, that's... Because again, the first gen in me says, well, you need access to opportunities. And if you're mm. going to be shut down by maybe the approach it, and, and the message is on point, but the approach might be something I want to work on. I, I'm, I tend to be careful with what Terian said around the uh, the po big political issues. Doesn't mean you won't be able to detect where I'm at because it's, it's the approach by which I'm broadcasting what a part of me that's becoming, right? That leader that I'm becoming that's shedding away the fear of someone's going to come at me sideways or an opportunity is going to be lost by walking in line with spirit. If you're speaking truth to an issue you're so passionate about that you know to be true, then now I feel it's okay for me to speak out on that. I think other things I don't like to do is, uh, and I believe we touched about this at another conversation, is posting stuff you haven't even read, right? So it's like, oh my gosh, I love the blurb you wrote and I'm just immediately gonna share it. And then you actually read the article and you're like, oh, because what happens there is now you're, from an audience perspective, being affiliated with maybe a comment, a thing that if someone says, okay, Cynthia posted this, they read what I cross promoted. Oh my gosh, this one paragraph, how dare Cynthia? And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's bad on me because it is, if you cross, if you put something down, it will be attached to your name. So be very mindful of how to do it. Maybe you find something that resonates, but you're like, I don't like the way it's written and maybe there are other words to capture exactly the way I feel, follow that. So I tend to follow that a lot. And with the personal realm, um, I posted maybe one or two pictures of my son and I doing something like at a university or at a function or a gala and an event, but that's the extent of it. Unless I feel that in my heart, I have to come at this issue from my single mom hat hot because it's, so it really is contingent around finding the comfort of uh, when I need to show up at those different hats because I'm, my commitment is you need to develop your leadership voice and values and purpose. And so it's a little, it's a messy process, but I, I'm happy to have put some blinders in there. And the third one is the awkward one about LinkedIn is when people approach you with this like swaggy, who are you energy in your DM? You're like, no, no, no. We don't do that energy on LinkedIn. Feel free to go to a dating app. So that's also, I don't do that on LinkedIn. Mm -mm. Can I, Great. Can I, can I of course. add something? Of course. So, uh, Especially, I want to highlight what Cynthia shared about re, uh, making sure to read the article or read the information, the post that you are reposting or that you're sharing. Because if you do not, not just the, that, it can be very controversial, but also uh, people's, you want to make sure that, that when talking about your brand, creating community and things of that nature, like, Imag think about how the how Apple, Nike, some of the larger um, or I, or um, I use an example of Papa John's. So Papa John's was a uh, is CEO did some very controversial things. Uh, so think about it, there was a larger pizza company made millions of dollars and their brand was tarnished and they had to reshape it and rebrand it. So our brand is just like that. 
Um, and so if the things that you post and even some of the articles, the titles can be so misleading. You can find, you can Google it that talks about how the articles can, the, 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 the title of an article or a post or anything like that can be very misleading. So read it because that shows a lot about who you are. Uh, if you don't read it and you just share it, that's a part of your identity and your brand. I, I will say that I have made that mistake before and like, okay, do the timing. I get this. Like I just read the first sentence or this sounds so, so captivating. So we have to move away from that. I think that's due to our short attention span and like, okay, I don't have time or I have all these other things going on. Take the time to read that post, read the information. Does it connect with you? Because that can surely impact your brand. Um, and then the other piece that Cynthia shared, the last part was about the dating piece uh, or the shooting your shot in LinkedIn. And so uh, I, I would love to hear what others will have to say. Uh, maybe that's a, definitely a question for later. I, I think every platform, even when any idea that you have can be shaped and changed. And so um, at first I was like, uh, no, LinkedIn is just for this, but also are we being too stagnant and one-sided and just, but LinkedIn is a professional site. So I'm always about like hearing other ideas and thoughts on that. And I'm still a very much no about like, there's a space and there's our space and apps and other things for that. Um, but also I'm open because I know there has to be some opinions about that. Uh, but for me personally, I don't do that and do not like it, but I do see that it does happen. When, when you say shoot your shot, are you talking about like dating wise? Oh, or? yes. Oh, yes. okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. um, before, thanks for that. And um, everyone, by all means, continue to use the chat. Before we open it up though, to, um, to questions from our community, if you could spend some time talking about what are some myths about LinkedIn that you may have heard or, or, or that you want to personally like challenge, for example? Yeah, I can jump right into that. Mm -hmm. um, real talk does take place on LinkedIn. Okay. I think, I think when I first landed there, I thought it was very stuffy and this is a professional space and you can't find a channel to express what you're feeling or thinking, career goals or career heartbreaks, right? I think LinkedIn is a space where you can navigate all parts of maybe what you're experiencing navigating the world of work. And I didn't realize that until I was seeing authors and, and their books speaking timeliness to the issues that were happening or colleagues, people I know and don't know, raising awareness to certain issues or people just saying, I just need a moment to just be my raw self. I never pictured LinkedIn to be that because I always pictured it to be either, you know, promoting your event initiative program you're sharing the award you're receiving your award you are, I, I am pleased to announce <laughs> yeah it's a very broadcasty but very around like the highlight reel but the and when i think i've engaged with the platform enough that my feed has a blend of like people speaking truth to power people being vulnerable and saying i need we need to unite and change it and another sector around like upskilling and professional experiences and associations and network, which actually aligns very nicely to where I'm at. So um, I'm hoping that there's a space in LinkedIn that has more of that spiritual existential piece. I don't know if that exists on the platform, but based off of what I learned already, people can speak their truth here about the world of work. I am hopeful. I might find some of that in LinkedIn as I delve into different leaders. Terian, how about you? Some 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 myths you want to bust? Yeah, um, I think regard. So there's two. One is regardless of your following or how many individuals. If you're starting off at, at having ten people or you have several thousands of people, uh, always know that um, you never do know who is watching you. Uh, and so your brand can always, again, going back to this aspect of your brand, when you're building community, people do look at what you like, reshare, or, or even the things that you post. Uh, so you think like, okay, no one's looking at this, 
Uh, but you're starting to build this. Imagine like the many communities that have happened around our nation or different nations. It takes time. And so know that, that you know, regardless of however your followers look, people are looking at you and that there are individuals that are looking up to and looking forward to what you post and share. So you're having an impact on people. Uh, I, I do hope that, you know, j the same way that I did for LT is that um, give people their flowers. Uh, so, you know, if someone it has impacted you or I would want to know that. And so I try to put forth that energy as well. Um, the other piece is related to that you, that by just using this, okay, I'm going to do, I'm trying to use LinkedIn just to get a job and that's it. Um, that's the only route. So I'm kind of using people or this aspect thinking that, hey, you're using someone just because you're doing that. I think we have to be really careful with language uh, because you can intentionally use people. I think that does exist, but you can also be very purposeful and strategic in how you use it. So by changing that language, it is if you want someone to be your mentor, it's okay to just tell them, hey, or I want to do an informational interview. Um, send, send a message to them. You don't have to, I think sometimes also with the uh, first gen identity or, and other identities too, we think like, okay, this person will never reach out to me or, uh, or they're going to know that I'm using them or trying to do something. No, just, just take the opportunity. Um, the site is for connecting and building community. So it is okay to be intentional in doing that and, and making those uh, connections with people. And it's okay to start small. You can just reach out to one person this month. It doesn't have to be 10 people in a week or 10 people this month. Try one person and know that um, to same way as, as amongst people that we are, uh, not to take it hard that if someone doesn't message you back that next second uh, or that next day, give them some time. Um, so I think that's all wrapped into just this aspect of community and connection because LinkedIn is such a powerful tool for us and you can definitely use it to connect with people. It's all about being strategic and purposeful. Yes. And permission to add, um, it, the turning point around feeling self-conscious of, am I taking their time? Or, oh my gosh, should I ask? For me, the turning point became, these are things I want, desires. Make, can someone share information on this? Or can someone connect me with someone on that? Because the... The realization of like, I need to develop my own sense of what I'm looking for. LinkedIn became a whole ecosystem. It's like, it's in here. It's like a video game. I put on my little knapsack and which, where are you going? And then maybe the, that person says, sorry, I'm busy. I'm overwhelmed. I don't, you go on to the next person because thematically, yeah, you're, you're doing it. And then once I, I was doing that for months and I was able to shake off so much of that, I'm a, believe it or not, shy, introverted to myself. And once I finally allowed, Cynthia, this is what you want from the world and you cannot live in this level of deprivation and, and fear, it became so easy to affirm and comment and repost and ask for someone's time because at this point it was, these are now mini practices to honor my needs and the shifting went away from, I'm going to bother someone too. I'm helping myself. Ooh, child. Ooh. <laughs> we, we all need to lay down after that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to open it up for, for community questions. And, and as we're doing that, if folks are um, preparing their, their thoughts, whether they want to unmute or put in the chat. Terry, I want to go back to something you said and just your positive, you and Cynthia both are so positive, but your reframing of this idea that people are watching, I think what happens sometimes is that that's what keeps people on the sideline, right? Like, oh, everyone's watching, but we have to think about the good that comes out of people watching because this is where opportunity comes. Um, they, there's, um, this is the work I actually do in my job with career launch. Listen, family of all jobs that are posted that you see that only that's only 20% of all that's available. 
is 80% that's in that hidden job market, which means that jobs are created for you, for example, um, because they're seeing how you are, you, um, how you go, go about in the world, right? Tarion has a whole story about that, but <laughs> we won't get into it today. But just, just keep that in mind too, that some positive things will happen. Not, not, we don't say people are watching so that you stay at home. We say that to, so you can get out. Um, go ahead, Renee. Renee's, Renee is another great, Renee, I see you on LinkedIn. Go ahead, family. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to add that I think it's also important that when you are sharing your information and responding, if you get a negative review back, don't take it personal. Because we all, we all think of things different way. Our interpretations are always going to be different. So you have two people in the world, you're always going to have two different opinions. You know? So for me, that was my stopping point. At, at one particular point when I first got on, I made a comment and I got a barrage of negative responses. And I was like, whoa, okay, this, this site is not for me. And so I just sort of dd it along, you know, and didn't come back for months. And the only reason I came back is because I had to post something for work on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's the only reason I came back. And then it was that one post that I began to get my confidence up and I could go in and I can add a little comment here and sit back, watch, see what happens, then add another little comment. And then before I knew it, I hit LT. Hey, how you doing? I guess, you know, I want to introduce myself and, and things just rolled that way. So I think we need to be comfortable as Cynthia said with ourselves as well, but also just don't take things personal. You know, it, it, it happens, you know, and for me, my best case, and I always tell people, you never heard, you've always heard the word no before. It'll be all right. <laughs> you know, just keep moving forward. You know, I just want to share that. I love that. Not the first time you heard no. Any questions? LT, can I share something really of quick? Of course. About the, the, the power of using social media. So uh, especially building community. As someone, um, I, I didn't know how to really, I didn't want to share some of the positive things that I've done um, or like presenting. So last fall, uh, I had did during Black History Month, I did some presentations about uh, black, uh, black, black male masculinity, uh, how it, um, and share my personal story. So I had did about three conferences that got approved um, and all this was virtual. So usually I do that and keep it within myself. I'm like, I'm not going to share this out. Uh, or I may tell my family a little bit. So I, I had the idea about posting it on social media. Well, um, once I posted the third time, someone had hit me up. Uh, someone had messaged me. Uh, it was actually one of my fraternity brothers who was working at a university. And he said, oh, I'm actually doing some work with my students related to this. And I think this would be good for you to, to come do, come speak to them um, virtually for a certificate program where they were talking about black masculinity, just black men and different things about being in black, being in academia um, as black males or just as males in general. So I said, okay, I thought this was free. Actually, it was a paid opportunity. So I was doing consulting work and that was my first time ever doing, I said, well, nobody's going to pay me to do this. I'm doing this for free. And so um, that was the first time I did. And I said, wow, just the power of utilizing, um, just sharing this out about the accomplishment but also using the community, like being able to share this out amongst the community. And so knowing that people are watching in different ways and seeing how you navigate, and so that can create those opportunities about a, a new job that was never like that, that was never even thought of. So share that information now, start small. But that story was just showed me the impact. Now that was on Facebook. I also did some of that on LinkedIn as well, which helped my followers. But that was on, I did on both LinkedIn and Facebook. So that was an awesome story that I just wanted to share with you all. So <laughs> awesome indeed, Terry. And that's a great example. I just want to see if there are any questions at this time, if anyone wants to unmute 
and ask a question for Cynthia or Tarian, or feel free to put your question or comment in the chat as well. Y'all are sharing some amazing tips. Okay, sure. if nobody's trying to speak up, may I? Oh yeah, you get what you need. What what does Cynthia tell you? She said, okay. "Get what you." She said, "Get what you need." Okay, I do have a question. And uh, LT, you had stated earlier in the comment section that um, to have someone look over your LinkedIn, you know, and look over what you're posting. And I did that, and I came up with, and I selected three of my mentors, and each of my mentors had a different mm, had a different selection or suggestion or takeaway. I mean, they weren't even close together. So how do you find that happy medium where it's when someone is looking at your LinkedIn, they say, okay, this is a well-rounded person um, and not too personal, not too professional or just lost in some way. How do you find that happy medium? Cynthia Terrian, either one of you want to answer? Oh, so I view this like a, a resume. So when I was um, looking at like next jobs after graduating, everybody had a different opinion about it. I think first and foremost is taking, taking that, but also it is first I think first diving into who are you and what is your identity and what do you want your brand to be? I think that's first because if we have those different thoughts about what everyone else shares, we're gonna be like, okay, I need to frame this for this person, but then that person shares this. They have their own viewpoint too. So I think you, you first do some investment into yourself. What do you want your brand is? When someone sees you on LinkedIn, when someone sees uh, wherever your presence is, what do you want them to think about you? What are the, next, what are the comments that individuals are sharing? And so, okay, I want to adapt this. I may not adapt this. And I think people, you know, you're asking for advice. So people are okay if you use some or not use it at all or uh, use all of it. So incorporating that and then just, you know, constantly having that every so often, maybe, you know, every, um, every quarter, every six months or something like that, thinking about having someone to review it, but also being very, um, framing your foundation of who you are first is key. Yeah, I agree with that. To add, um, a part of me knows that I haven't reached the point of refinement of my LinkedIn strategy approach. Because I know that though, I've already forgiven myself for mistakes that I'm making today that I don't know that I'm making. And so when I look back and people tell me these feedback loops, oh, I perceived you as, or oh, I didn't know. What I want to work on today is understanding, I, I've allowed myself the process of growth and development. So what might be uh, elementary today, maybe be more refined in the future. Um, because I've learned in my state of transition, especially when I when I pivoted out of the role I was in, tapped into my network and I got a lot of perspective and feedback and I was overwhelmed. But be until I came to the point and said, wait, this isn't mine, this is yours. What you're seeing and, and reviewing and what's popping out to you, maybe it's not even anything I intended to put out there. And the read that you're having is not me and finding peace in that. So as I explore the development of, of what my LinkedIn is saying to people or not saying to people. And people will ask you more than you're actually going to give. They're like, you need to be posting more on this, or you need to be talking about, like, I'm gonna follow my heart and intuition to approach it with the understanding that I will get to a point where it's so much more refined. And I, I get concerned if people give me a feedback area and I'm like, oh, heck no, you read, why, tell me more about why you read it that way. Cause in my head, that wasn't it. And it would be open for that understanding and then a downstream decision point to change it, tweak it, or just say, no, I, I was true to me. That That's on me, <laughs> you, yeah. Do either of you have an opinion about uh, LinkedIn premium or does anyone else have an opinion about LinkedIn premium? I know I no longer 
I don't pay for any LinkedIn service. What about either of you? No opinion based off of the use I have for LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is about community, finding those leaders, identifying people who I'm resonating with, people that inspire me. Oh my gosh, I want to be you when I grow up. But I've heard that people, if they're tack looking for a job strategically and you need mm -hmm. access to those recruiters or certain people, that becomes a part of the strategy. And they're like, dang, I really want to do it that way. Then make the investment. But I myself have never used it, but I wouldn't be opposed to using it if I found myself in that seat. I second what Cynthia shared. She did. Yeah, I have nothing to add to that. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I want to read this great comment from Bradley, who says, as someone who has sat on the sidelines with LinkedIn until recently, thank you all for reaffirming, giving and giving me insight that the social media fatigue present on other platforms, especially in the times that we're in, can be different on LinkedIn. Um, it is an untapped source of coalition building, and each of you give credence to that in your own way. Oh my gosh, thank you, Bradley. I'm grateful to be in your wisdom and your energy overall. Bradley, we appreciate you sharing that. Yes. Coalition building. So yeah, I for like sure. Um, and I'm happy to, as people are continuing to think of other questions or comments, um, to even use my LinkedIn as an example, because I think this is where people can get a little nervous and so I'll share my screen really quickly. Um, so again, bam, you know, I'm talking about first gens all day. Um, I think people can get concerned about the profile views that you have access to. It's okay to look to see who's looking at you. Um, again, if we're, <laughs> stop thinking about this as like creepy stalkerdom and think of it as, I think Cynthia, you had said it earlier, just about community building, you just said coalition building. Another strategy could be to click on that button to see who's, who's checked out your profile. You don't know why they checked out their profile. You don't want to make assumptions. You don't want to make assumptions. You could, if you wanted to, you could look, you could even message them and say, oh, I see that you've looked on my profile and then learn about them. So th those are some good strategies there. All right, uh, Dr. Joy Hannibal says, any general recommendations for improving or enhancing LinkedIn account that you have received from others or that you can share from your own suggestions? So any recommendations for sort of enhancing your account? So, the, there's two that pop up. One is, and I'm going to go very, uh, very simple. That uh, first would be, uh, as LT showed you, that background that says first, uh, first gen professional. Um, yes, exactly. That put your interest on there. So on my profile, uh, as I talk about uh, being very strategic. So. I am someone that likes to present. Um, I, I uh, am all about advocating. So as you see someone at the podium, black male and has the fist t-shirt. I saw that and I said, yes, very intentional. So uh, I think that is, that is first um, because I had like a blank background in the back and someone told me just share something different there. And I, I said, okay, I'll make that change. Another thing that I found, I was looking, doing some Google searches about how to improve my LinkedIn. So caveat, my, my LinkedIn profile can definitely be improved. Um, there are some things that I am working on. Uh, so I acknowledge that. I'm not an expert at it, but I'm still improving along with all of, all of you all. Um, when you have a new position, it usually posts up what your position is, but you can change that. That's a, I think that's called a headliner. And so my, my things have on there um, things that I'm interested in, but be very careful in that for some things in your field, such as I'm being in student affairs, uh, we can use student affairs words. Uh, so other people outside the field do not understand what that, what that means at all. Uh, or if I put student affairs, they're like, okay, what, what is that? Uh, so I use very much some different words. So I said presenter, retention strategist, student success advocate. Now, again, I can definitely improve on that. That's one thing that I'm working on, but I don't have my job on there anymore. And also it is very intentional for me because 
I, my job is not solely who I am. Um, my job is a part of me. Uh, so I have all the other interests. And so in my job, I do those things, but I also do those aspects outside of my job. So instead of having my job, yes, it's very professional, but expanding the boundaries in that I am more than my job. Real quick before Cynthia, Cynthia, don't lose your thought, but before you answer, I do want to point out um, something I learned from the back end, from the recruiter side, that they, recruiters use those headlines to do searches for people. So if there's a job you want, put that title in the headline, because that's how they do a search for you is using the headline. If there's also, if there's more you want to say about yourself, there's another section you can do that too. Okay. Go ahead, Cynthia. Um, I'm in the process of rethinking how my LinkedIn is set up because now I'm making the pivot from, I want to reach out community, thought leaders, um, great organizations, associations. Now that I'm like moving through and I realize I have a better sense of what type of professional network I want to be a part of, I want to go back to my LinkedIn and do something with it. One one thing when, that came up when I was reflecting is what you probably won't see heavily in my LinkedIn activity is the fact that I am a program evaluator, I'm a mixed methods program evaluator. And that skill set is embedded in my work. But because I don't post about that of my work, it doesn't you wouldn't necessarily see how how deeply ingrained it is in my practice. So one of the things I experimented with. Right. And I want to use that language intentionally because you might try something and realize, oh, I don't want to do this was for the last role I had. I added some examples of the work products that I did. Right. Because for me, it was really important to self validate. I contributed powerful work. I come with a very unique skill set and approach. But how do I tell that story in a way that I was honoring the nature of how I approach the work while I I am using LinkedIn for community purposes. So that's why I know I realized, oh gosh, you are, well, I'm on the market. So I did, right now I'm in transitioning space of where do I go from here? But I don't, I don't use LinkedIn to amplify my work, which is a feedback that a lot of my colleagues tell me, like, you do such great work, why don't you talk about it? Like, because, right, I get into that energy <laughs> but the summer is now a pivot. So I would say if you have a lot of work product that you're proud of that you wanna showcase, LinkedIn does have tools to add them to the role you created them in, um, like an archival. So you can curate, like this is an example of this, this is an example of that. And I would second the, the header um, as opposed to like the title, like title working at, because it made it easier for me to be more expressive just by that simple thing, because I don't want people to immediately always see my name and the name of where I was working at, because that's the reason that brought me to LinkedIn. I wanted community and inspiration. So I even felt it in my heart. As soon as I made the pivot, I was like, I can say whatever I need to say, tactfully and respectfully. But it, it, it <laughs> came with that understanding that I am, I, I'm not an org's property. I have freedom and liberation in this professional sphere to do what I need to do as a professional. And so little things like that, you'll notice your behavior change over time and say, I want that off. I want to add that back in. I need to change this. Another thing is like, I would, I would love to look at how to approach my LinkedIn and, and stuff in Spanish. Mm. Like I want to Spanish. So how do I like approach it that way? Cause I, I have other followers particularly in Honduras, that have their stuff in Spanish because my intention is to grow my Honduran network. But my stuff is in English. <laughs> so I need to think about how am I going to approach that. Yes. Uh, two things. Um, one, I want to share. Um, I put a link in the chat for this book where um, it's called Linked, actually. And it's if you are looking at, on how to maximize LinkedIn, to look for jobs is a fantastic book. I'm a big believer in the hidden curriculum. And so that's one of the one of the ways I use the LinkedIn platform is to expose some things. But listen, fam, when I don't even know how this book showed up on my LinkedIn feed, 
but it did that this book came out. I was telling Terry and Cynthia earlier, me being me, I connected with the author. I was like, hey, great job. This is what I do. We can overlap. He was like, oh, okay, keep me posted. And then Cynthia shared the link to this event. I tagged him, one of the authors, Jeremy, and said, hey, this is happening. I'll send you the recording. He's like, if there's anything I could do to support. So think about those positive stories as opposed to people sort of shutting you down and whatnot. I want to share, Cynthia and Terry, I want to share this slide, and um, which are some sort of positive steps people can take and get you all's thoughts and feedback on that. Um, here we go right now. All right, so how do we move from just being on the sidelines, right? So number one, either update or just take a good look at your LinkedIn profile, um, connect with some, identify maybe is the first step, some five professionals whose careers or values align with yours. Um, and I love what, what um, Terry has said, it doesn't have to be five all at once, but start to identify them. Take a step and post something. And if you're feeling really confident, arrange a virtual coffee chat. Um, any, any, Terry or Cynthia, do you have any thoughts about any of those tips or anything else you would like to add? I think um, what comes up for me is that a lot of, the, you'd be surprised of how many people are searching for you the way you are searching for them. Mm. Um, I think we get caught up in our heads like, oh, I really want to talk to someone. And then they're probably in that same space. I really want to talk to someone and whoever initiates, you know, I think that's a precious realization to say, it can be that easy to connect with like Magma people. Um, of course, not everyone is gonna land like, yes, let's meet up and connect. But I, I always frame it as that, like, I try to say information I interview when it's that. If I wanna say, can I unpack something with you? Then I try to be clear, like that's the goal. Or if it's just like, I just wanna get to know your story. And I think being clear about it and if they go quiet, you'll realize why it goes quiet when you're on the other side of it. When you have all these people say, oh, can I connect on the email? And can we sketch or something? And then you realize, oh my gosh, this can be a full on activity. Then the compassion comes through. I, I get it, you didn't sketch it, that's cool. So I think it's this um, willingness to engage in the, in the community. And for example, my brother's in the gamer video game no, video game and like a Pokemon card community and you develop an understanding how people behave and show up and engage and I'm like, wouldn't that like upset you? He's like, no, like this is a community. This is how we are all trying to figure out and navigate. So you realize that the things you were self-conscious about, like I'm going to send the initiated message just becomes, I'm going to see if this can happen. And that's it. It's getting over oneself and that anxiety that becomes a key part of the process. Marianne, anything you want to add? Uh, along with Cynthia, uh, give yourself grace mm. through, uh, through this entire process. You are, uh, I should say you, I have made mistakes through this. And um, it is either that mistake is either not posting as frequently, um, um, not sharing enough, inf not sharing enough information under my job posts or interests. There's definitely some things that I can improve upon. And so, uh, you don't have to be perfect. After this, you do not have to be perfect. Like just take the things that LT has shared and that we have shared in, uh, in totality, like try one of them before you get off this call, like before you get to your next thing, write down one thing that you are going to do, one. It can take you five minutes. It could take two minutes. Like you don't have to devote an hour to doing this because LinkedIn is a huge platform, but just give yourself grace um grace because I, all of us have so many conflicting priorities that are going on and so just take some time to intentionally do that uh and one of the things i can say especially about the virtual um virtual coffee date or, or career conversation uh i'm thankful lt connected me with someone um uh and i reached out to them and things that i, I reached out to them and what happened is 
I tried to set up a tried to set up a um conversation with them, but on my end, I didn't keep I like as far as the timing. So for me, it was like I'm wanted to have a conversation within the first month, but I didn't have that conversation within the month. We haven't had a conversation yet. So now I gotta loop back into this because there was those other conflicting priorities. So as much as I can say that, hey, like I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't have that conversation with them. LT connected me to them and I didn't even do this yet. It's like they have a life, I have a life, things happen. But how can I rebuild that? So I'm going to be going to reach back out to them and say, hey, my apologies. I still want to have this. I still want to have this conversation to get to know you. And so it doesn't like it can seem very draining. And sometimes we can attack ourselves for not being perfect or not showing up the way that we want to show up. Give yourself grace. I give you grace. Yes. This has been so fantastic. Um, I, if there, first I want to see if there are any more questions or comments. Thank you, Angela. I was feeling the same way. Angela says this conversation has been energizing, affirming, and inspiring. Yes, Angela, I agree with that. Um, and if there are other, please let me know if there are any questions as that's happening. I'll just put a little plug in the chat here. If you are someone who works with students, know that the work that I do with Career Launch is actually teaching these strategies to students. And so we actually have, a um, with Career Launch, a curriculum that walks students, both undergrad and graduates, through, not, not it's not LinkedIn specific, but the strategies for um, reaching out to particularly people you don't know, so your weak ties or your cold network, and how do you build it? And you would never know that I did not know Cynthia before, months ago, you would never have that idea. Um, but it's again, just like she was saying, just sort of putting that good energy out there and then finding someone, like someone will will pick up on it, right? Um, so we, we hope that we give you that confidence and pausing to see if there are other questions. If, if not, I wanna see if um, First Tarion and then Cynthia have any closing comments you want to add or and you, you've given so, such great advice <laughs> but if there's any other thing that wasn't said today or one other thing you want to leave the folks with um please share terry and we'll turn it over to you first okay awesome um as it relates to just taking that next step uh i just want to reiterate the affirm yourself give yourself grace and include some type of self-care and meditation throughout your day and throughout your work. I even share sharing that out too amongst others. Uh, we are like, there's a lot going on, on LinkedIn, a lot going on in our life. There are so many things we can't improve upon, but there's so much good that we are doing and um, so much impact that we have on ourselves and especially amongst others as well. So acknowledge that and you are doing it, you are doing the best job that you can at this moment. Love that. I'm here for all the affirmations. And <laughs> um, I think I, I will add that uh, LinkedIn is a very powerful ecosystem to explore the many interests that you hold with you. I think uh, reflecting back in my time in both sectors, higher ed and nonprofit, it became easy to surround myself with people that shared similar experiences and, and career journeys. But I find myself in a place today that I want more access to possibility. What can I become or where can I go? And I think that's the first gen reality hitting hard. Like there's so much injustice and yet there are so many resources out there. So if you also find yourself in a similar situation where you need new energy and, and the terrain. Maybe it's a, a sector shift, an industry shift. You're like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to get there. This is a type of ecosystem that will allow you to understand what might that world be like by virtue of following people, engaging people that work in a different area. Or maybe becomes, I want that leadership role and that title. Follow those people and start to observe what they're what's the, the common thread behind that role or title. And what are they doing and how are they behaving? And I love the approach it as, as an anthropologist. And that will really allow you to immerse and participate 
as full as you can, right? So I, I have learned to see it as, oh my gosh, I, my life can go anywhere if I really like pour in the love on myself and my behavior and my profile and show the love of people who are doing the same thing on LinkedIn. Because otherwise, why are we all there? What are we doing? <laughs> I love that. That is a fantastic place to start. There's some great comments, Tarion and, um, and Cynthia, take a look in the, in the, in the chat, please. But um, thank you all for being here today and taking that step and you know figuring figuring things out. And I, I hope I've heard so many things about just take one step, be forgiving of yourself. Do just do one thing today. So um, thank you for everyone for um, putting those things that you're going to do in the chat because it helps to keep us all accountable, but also helps to manifest as well. So feel free to reach out to us and if. Um, uh, if you found some success or you made some changes, just just let me know. Um, I, I would I would love to hear it. And if there's some other um, conversations you'd like for us to have, perhaps we'll consider that in the future too. So thank you all so much. Ha enjoy the rest of your day. Bye everyone. Thank you. See ya. Thank you everyone.